Uh, and one of my favorites, I told my mom about this, was these two guys walking around um, just talking about the days of the invasion. There was looting. There was ta U.S. tanks in the streets. Talking about the looting. And the one guy goes, do you remember everyone wore hats during the invasion because they looted the hat store? And I was like, you're never going to get that in a standard historical rendering of the invasion of Panama City. <laughs> Hey everybody, we're the Good Doctors of Abbey Research. I'm Dr. Kristen. And I'm Dr. Aaron. And you are welcome to our coverage of Invasion, which is our art piece for Panama, one of our stops on the Colonizers World Tour, where we just spend a lot of time trying to figure out other cultures that we don't know anything about, honestly, <laughs> and what colonization has to do, uh, which is always just so much. And actually, I, I highlight that in this particular film, because even more than some other films we've watched and art we've consumed, this one is entirely about the U.S. colonization of um Panama, even though we don't call it that, um, it is about the U.S. relationship with Panama. Let us uh -huh. let us say that. That's a little bit more potentially diplomatic. Um, mm. And for anybody who, who is joining us just for our review of this, let us say we found this work to be brilliant um, and very, very impactful. It was Panama's first Academy Award nomination, and we can see mm -hmm. why. Um, mm -hmm. It's crafted like such a story in a way that we found lovely. So uh, speaking for both of us, since we talked offline, spoiler alert, insider baseball. Um, <laughs> I do know that we both, there was, you know, there was something that bothered me that didn't bother Dr. Aaron and a couple other vice versa, but overall we would recommend this wholeheartedly. And we're going to oh, yeah. get into why we, why we believe um, everybody should watch it. Yeah. So I think, uh, it's, it's oh, before I forget, we found okay. it on Amazon Prime, yes. and we paid U.S. dollars for it, but we find that to be uh, worth your money. Yeah, it was like $4 or something, I don't know, yeah. um, on Amazon Prime, so worth every every penny. Uh, I think for me, what was so interesting, so like the format of the film is really a documentary collecting the memories that people had about the U.S. invasion to Panama in December of 1989. Um, and this was under the auspices to depose uh, Manuel Noriega as the general president, um, de facto president of Panama. And, like, you don't get a lot of introduction into what the documentary filmmaker uh, Abner Benaim, Benaim Apologies, me, Abner, uh, was trying to do uh, until like halfway through when he kind of like lays his cards on the table to a person he's interviewing. Um, and that's when you learn that he just wants to collect these stories and he doesn't really want to tell a particular narrative. Like he's not trying to direct a story. So he says, I'm portraying everyone's truth. Everyone has a truth. Even if that truth is a lie, I accept it. And for me, like once I got that conceit, I was like, this is absolutely, it's a, it's a memory study. Yeah. And like, because, and for me, it was like, it's literally like a visual representation of what I did in my PhD, which is probably why I might've connected with it on a different level than Dr. Kristen, because it was so much. It wasn't about telling the story of what happened because he knew that you couldn't do that 30, 35 years later. It was about getting people to tell the story of what they remembered. And so when you allow people to do that without directing them in the way that you want them to tell the story, you get really fascinating, like, human insights 
Uh, and one of my favorites, I told my mom about this, was these two guys walking around um, just talking about the days of the invasion. There was looting. There was t U.S. tanks in the streets. Talking about the looting. And the one guy goes, do you remember everyone wore hats during the invasion because they looted the hat store? And I was like, you're never going to get that in a standard historical rendering of the invasion of Panama City but I just and it was such a beautiful visual of just like you know yeah there were tanks and you know we weren't sure what was happening and a lot of people died but do you remember everybody walked around with hats and I was like yeah and there was this one guy who was like I did all the the looting of the heavy stuff yeah. because there was other people that couldn't carry it so I carried it for them I was like carried way to be a servant them. mate like yeah yeah uh, so it was the 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 human storytelling in 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 anthropology. We have a we have a name for it. What he did a lot, which is like a walking methodology, where he just mm. put microphones on people and a camera on them and walked them through a space or had them stand at a space. And so you get the Canadian woman, I think, who has a pub, who walked through Noriega's house. Yeah, and, like, that told, was amazing. Told stories as she was walking. So for me, that was the value in it. Um, I was confused a little bit at times um, where he was going and what he was doing. Um, but kind of once I got that conceit, I was like, okay, buddy, I'm with you. Just, just, I'll just sit with the stories. Yeah, my thing was just organizationally. So yeah. if that's your conceit, I would have liked to know that up front, just yeah. a little bit of understanding that so I could orient myself in not trying to find a narrative, especially because yeah. he was, you know, at the very end, there's like a 10 minute short film mm -hmm. of a recreation of some things. And the, the kind of the conceit of the documentary that we watch is him in the process of filming that. Yeah. And I'm enough of like a literalist where I was just like, are you actually going to show us that film? Like what yeah. is happening here? Yeah. So I would have liked a little bit more handholding. Additionally, yeah. because I didn't know any of the players in Panama, some Chirons telling us who people were yeah. would have been helpful, um, you know, like, and what age they were at the invasion. I would have liked to know that just because developmentally how you experience things as a child um, you know, would have been really interesting, especially I felt that way really strongly once we got to talking, I don't know anyone's names because they didn't give us really any Chirons. I couldn't remember anyone's names um, to the man who was one of the one of the, in, you know, uh, resistance leaders. Yeah. And I would have kind of liked to know, even just so I could learn more about Panama, because I would now like to learn more about the resistance movements in Panama. What organization was he with that I could Google and learn more? And so yeah. there was a little bit, not quite enough breadcrumbs for me. Um, yeah. But that's all organizational. That's all just like, okay, if I want to take this and now go on. Right. I don't have a starting place in a certain way. Yeah. And I would have liked one. Um but I will say there are scenes in this that will be like that have just burned themselves into my memory banks. Mm. And uh, I mentioned in yesterday's video that I once spent an entire eight hours in Panama, which, of course, makes me a complete expert. <laughs> um, and I remember so much driving around all the abandoned army bases. And yeah. that was in 2001. They were trying to figure out what to do. I would love to go back now and see what they've done with with the all of the buildings. Yeah. Um <clears throat> And it is such a beautiful country with such a complicated history entirely because of where it's located. Like yeah. we said this yesterday, but I want to bring this up today is that Panama's natural resource is its location. Mm -hmm. And that's more valuable than almost any other natural resource that you can get in other places. And so I, I now have more questions, especially about Noriega. Um, and, the kind of machinations. What was fascinating to me a couple times is the people that I felt like I would probably be friends with that were like, listen, he was a shit show. The U S is terrible. Everything was garbage. Yeah. What we wanted was a completely different option. Yeah. And that was, that really resonated. Like when I think about other places under conflict, like Northern Ireland or Rwanda, you know, there's a lot of people now that they, the Rwandans have the same president since 1994 and, you know, they talk about like, you know, we, he's not great. What was what he saved us from wasn't great either. Now we'd yeah. like a third option. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's that's so much of what the true more humans are moderate than we ever think they are. Yeah. And that's what a beautiful thing about this show this thing shows is listen, we're pragmatic. Like mm-hmm. we're not we're not dumb. We knew what was going on. We just didn't have any power to change the writing on the wall. And that is for all of the members of our colonizers world tour, all the people we've met in the art, especially, um, there was a couple things that people said in this one that I could have transposed into Angola and oh, into Fiji sure. and into, and it was just like, oh, history repeats itself because it's not repeating itself. It like, it just keeps happening. Yeah. And I think like, this isn't a movie you watch necessarily to learn more about Noriega or the invasion or the U.S. relationship with Panama. Like, that's not the point of this documentary. And I thought it was, which is, which was my confusion and and original frustration. Yeah, exactly. And like, I think, you know, they could have been clearer about that, especially from the beginning Um, or just even in the description, because I think a lot of people would watch it, would read the like blurb and would watch it thinking that that's what they were going to come away with. Um, But it's, for me, like, so valuable in the conversations it has about who we remember and how Mm. we remember. What does it mean to remember things? We've just had this whole national conversation and international conversation around remembering 9-11. We just Mm. had this month, the 20th anniversary of of 9-11. And you and I offline have had a lot of conversations about what it means to remember something and what are we doing with that remembering. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think maybe that it struck me really, and I know it struck you too, the, the parts of that documentary that came through um, and what it's like across generations. And I think so both of us identified so much with our work in Northern Ireland for this as well, because, you know, the, he says at the end, the documentarian, he wanted... Like, the invasion and its aftermath have been forgotten. Young people, he... At one point, he interviews young people in a park. And none of them know. None of them have heard of it. Like, some visiting German students, and they have no idea, like, who Noriega is or what the invasion was. Um, And so I think this intergenerational remembering and forgetting um, is always going to be fascinating to both of us. Um, Because they were clear this is not taught in school. Which yeah, was, that was another really utterly fascinating yeah. to me. Yeah. That it's not even that there's only one narrative taught or that it's really shallow teaching, that it's, it's like literally not taught. They which don't teach about it. Yeah. boggled my mind. So I, we should yeah. bring that up, that that was... Yeah, I meant to mention that. I'm so glad you did. Yeah, because um, that's one of the issues that we face in Northern Ireland is that they don't teach a lot of the nuances of the Troubles. So people are... So children learn from their parents, which is often a emotionally charged memory stick and yeah. not necessarily a f- any any level of factual stuff, which is valid and that's how people remember pain, um, or they have nothing. Yeah. And so, you know, that 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 there's no narrative in pain. Like, how do you forget Noriega? <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you explain that he was no longer president? <laughs> okay. So fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that, like, not even like children, like re- like you know, late teens, early twenty. They they interviewed people. I think one kid was nineteen and another one was twenty three, twenty four. Had never didn't know about the invasion. Um, yeah, and I was just like, y'all, you were like close to being alive or not quite alive yet, like close. Um, and yeah, so that's that's always interesting. But we know, you know, history's not taught, and this kind of the point of our colonizers world tour was six months of Kristen and I being outraged that nobody told us things. And so we decided to find those things ourselves. I mean, Um, that's the summary of so much of our lives is being outraged that we didn't know something. Nobody told us. I Um, should know this. I should know this. Uh, So it's no surprise that like, you know, that's where we started uh, the Colonizers World Tour in 2021. That's where we're ending it. This is our last chapter oh, for this year. Second to last. We have one more. Second to last. Oh, I forgot. Equatorial Guinea. About to say, we get to talk, guys. Wait, we to got... You have me. to join us next week. This is, this is our last chapter. This is not our last video, but this is our last chapter. And so I think it's, you know, we're... Uh, 
we've been so so many places, but we're ending up pretty much where, where we, we started. started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I think that's a great a great place to end even <laughs> this video. Honestly, is to rem- yeah. is to keep in mind that no one tells their own stories, mm. and we need to be better at that because stories are how we change our minds and when we change our minds we change the world and so we're going to keep moving through that which is our purpose here at abby research Mm. um please join us next week for the bucket of confusion that is equatorial guinea y'all if you don't know where that is. It is the only Spanish-speaking country on the continent of Africa. If you didn't know there was a Spanish-speaking country on the continent of Africa, you are not alone. Um, and, you, and then you should definitely join us. <laughs> definitely join us. There is so much to learn and so much to know. Um, and we have been, the Slack messages back and forth for this one, friends, have been, are you serious? Are, are they serious? Is someone making this up? So please join us. In the meantime, if you liked this conversation, do all the youtube things. Please, please like it, subscribe it, and comment below. It really does make our day if you, you know, you are now, we'd love to know if you're thinking about watching Invasion now, or if you know another piece of art about Panama made specific, if we would prefer it to be made by Panamanians, but um, any kind of art, a documentary, a movie, a book, we're always looking for books. Um, anything like that, indigenous Panamanian artists, any of those kind of things, we would love to know. Please comment below um, so we can add them all to our living uh, resource sheet on the country of Panama. Love it. We hope to hear from you in any of those capacities Dr. Kristen just outlined for you or on social media anywhere else. If we don't hear from you before, we hope to see you next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>